Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for being here on such a wintry day. <laughs> you know, I had a friend uh, in St. Louis send me a picture. Um, Thursday it was 78, and sun, uh, yesterday they had snow. So. Wow. We just we just got chilly, right? But yeah, they really t <laughs> they really had a, a change. All right, some announcements. Please remember, we have these stewardship cards in the back back there. Um, and what they do is they ask for your commitment to be stewards of St. Paul. That means how much of your time are you willing to commit to make this parish go forward in 2023? And then how much of your finances are you willing to commit to make St. Paul's go forward in 2023? This is an important piece because when we gather them up, we can then build the plan for the church next year. Um, and so they're, they're back there, and I encourage you, please fill one out and have it turned in so that sometime in December we can try and get all these things down and planned out and have a discussion in January about how awesome 2023 is going to be. Um, so if you haven't, I encourage you, please find one of these cards. You can drop it in the offering plate. Um, we'll gather them up and make our plans for the future. Vestry meeting next Sunday. We had some people that couldn't make it today, so vestry meeting next Sunday. Um, we have some key things to talk about and plan for the rest of this year, this short gap that we have left. Um, calendars are back there. Those yellow pieces of paper, November and December, Grab a calendar so you know uh, what time church is <laughs> and you know what day special events are and all that stuff. So, And then during Advent at 9 a.m. we will have Bible study um, and we will talk about the gospel reading for that day. We're going into Matthew for um, the year when the year starts on Advent 1. And so we will talk about the gospel passage of Matthew for that day so that when we get into church, we can maybe have a better understanding and context of how it fits into Advent and um, then go out into the, the world for our seven days and have a better life those seven days after we understand what the heck it was Matthew was writing. Um, and you know what? We're going to start that next week because I'll be gone on Advent 1, November 27th. <coughs> but I so we can just read that verse next week, a week ahead, and you'll be ready for two weeks to go out and have a great week. So, so next week, 9 a.m., we will start um, the study on Matthew, the, the scriptures of Advent in Matthew. That, my friends, is all the announcements. So now, please, let's take some silence and prepare for worship. Holy Lord, the God that hears our prayers, you have said that you will be present whenever two or three gather in your name. We welcome your presence and grace in our lives. We ask that you manifest your glory today and shine your light on us. Through your light, may we illuminate the lives of those around us. As we feel your presence and worship today, May our knowledge of your divine mysteries continue to grow and change our lives forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you all to please stand. Our opening song is hymn 76, verses 1 through 4. Hymn 76, verses 1 through 4. On Jordan's bank the Baptist cry, 
announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings of the King of kings. Then cleanse be ever breast from sin, make straight the way for God within. And let each heart prepare a home where such a mighty guest may come. For Thou art our salvation, Lord, our refuge and our great reward. Without Thy grace we waste away like flowers that wither and decay. To heal the sick stretch out Thy hand and bid the fallen sinner stand. For then let thy white restore God's own true loveliness once more, once more. Sorry. Terrible. Our service of Holy Eucharist right to begins on page 355 in your book of common prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed, blessed be his, his kingdom, kingdom now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Continuing on page 356, together, glory to God in the highest and, and peace, peace to his to people, people on earth. earth. Lord God, God, heavenly King, almighty God, God and Father, Father we, we worship, worship you, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks. We, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. The scripture readings are, well, it doesn't say. The first reading today <laughs> is from the prophet Isaiah, <laughs> where I'm about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an older person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered a curse. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. 
They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of the trees shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The canticle appointed for today is canticle... And again, it doesn't say. Nine. Nine. It I doesn't just, have I'm that typo. There. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nine. 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 Let <laughs> us pray this together in unison. Surely, Surely it, is it is God who, who saves me. me. I, I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. And he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from, from the springs of the salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples, so that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now this one says what it is. The second reading today is from the second letter to the Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without praying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, to Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. 
They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your soul. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The term utopia was created by the English philosopher Sir Thomas More in his writing The Utopia in the year 1516. And the word utopia is defined as a place of ideal perfection, especially in terms of law or government or social condition. There are other great literary examples of this term utopia, beginning with Plato in his work The Republic in 370 B.C. And throughout more modern times by authors Jonathan Swift, H.G. Wells, Arthur C. Clarke, Aldous Huxley, and absolutely the visions of Gene Roddenberry. Star Trek. <laughs> there is also the opposite of this notion of a perfect world, a dystopia, which is an imagined world or society in which there is great suffering or injustice, typically one that is totalitarian or post-apocalyptic. This word is attributed to an unknown person in the 1950s. Modern examples of dystopian life are seen in the books 1984, The Hunger Games, and The Handmaid's Tale. But let me get back to utopia. Plato's writing in 370 BC is recognized as the first in utopian vision writing. But we could probably trace this idea of utopia back even further. If we look at popular synonyms for utopia, there are the familiar words of Elysium, Camelot, Nirvana, Paradise, Eden, Heaven, Zion, and New Jerusalem. So all this introduction narrows us down to the reading from the prophet Isaiah today, written some 400 years earlier than Plato. And in this chapter of Isaiah, we have the voice of God speaking to him, telling him of what is to come. It's a counter in a conversation that started in the first half of this chapter in which God speaks of judgment and salvation. But in the words today, we instead have joy and promise. It begins, For I am about to create a new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. God offered a promise of something new, a new creation, a new heaven and a new earth, a new Jerusalem, a utopia, where the old things are not to be remembered. Isaiah continued regarding these things. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and delight in my people. 
No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. No more weeping or distress. Death no longer has dominion regardless of age. These words from God, these promises of utopia, are not casual words offered to random prophets. In fact, it's not the only time these words are given. In Revelation chapter 21, John's visions are keenly identical. It reads, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. Then I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. Almost identical. With Isaiah, God promised his people, through his prophet, a new creation, a new heaven and earth, a new Jerusalem in which God will rejoice in, and in his people who are drawn to it, who will have their own joy, their own delight. A prophetic promise of a utopian place. But are we talking solely about something described to us, promised to us, in a moment beyond today, in a place of reward for God's chosen. When we look at Revelation 21 again, we read and hear of a utopia, but something different. And let me reread you this important difference that's in Revelation. See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Whereas the passage from Isaiah seems to reference a new and perfect place for his people, a utopia, an ideal place out there waiting for them, Revelation tells us that God has come to bring that perfect place to us and dwell among us. And is that not what Jesus came to do during his time on earth? Throughout the Gospels, Jesus' message to every person was one of promise. It was one that spoke of clearing away the old things for something new, for something better. I think it's safe to call it bringing the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God, depending on the author, to the here and now. A new creation. A new heaven and a new earth. A new Jerusalem. The Son of God in Christ Jesus in which God rejoices. A new Jerusalem. The home of God in human flesh as Jesus among the mortals in which he will dwell among us. What God offers through Isaiah is the promise of something great yet to be known. That promise is revealed in Revelation and as we look back then at the life of Jesus in the gospel and realize it's being offered to us now as well. New heaven and new earth have been created. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God around us right now now Jesus lived into the prophecies of the Old Testament saying today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing we 
we are living in the duality of the promises of utopia. Yes, we live in the hope of entrance into the promised New Jerusalem that God spoke to in Isaiah. This utopia where sorrow and weeping and distress are cast away and where age does not define death. Where all live in the light of God's joy and return to that joy. It is there for us. God has made it available for all of us who believe in Jesus Christ. And yet we live our daily lives with the opportunity to have Jesus walk among us, to bring a new Jerusalem, the kingdom of God to everyone in the here and now. Day after day, it feels like we creep closer and closer towards dystopia. We look around and see a waning worldwide pandemic, global warming causing catastrophic weather events, extremism and social or political beliefs around the world inching us closer and closer to war. Truth and trust are disappearing, clouding our ability to make critical thinking choices, and the richest 1% in the world seem to be trying out to be the next James Bond villain. Despite all this, our daily lives are an opportunity for us to step into a utopia here and now and live as Christ did, sharing the good news and our actions with those around us. When we choose to live a life that welcomes the stranger, the poor, the sick, the troubled, that strives for justice and peace among all people, and seeks to respect the dignity of every human being. We bring a piece of our promised utopia to this spot in this time. We must simply share the love of God with these and all others whom Jesus, Jesus gave of his time in his ministry. Because, my friends, not only is our new Jerusalem promised for us later, it can begin right now. If we choose to live by the good news first and only, we can create glimpses of that promised utopia every day. And it is only glimpses. Because, friends, we are not perfect. We are far from perfect, and we can only see that utopia that awaits us through a mirror dimly. But are our lives not better when we begin the day embracing the love of God? Better for ourselves and our neighbor, garnering visions of heaven through love. This is how we bring the hope of God's promise to those around us today. If even for a moment, a moment in the light of God's joy, and of our joy and delight as we live in a piece of utopia of the new Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Please stand. We continue on page 358 in your Book of Common Prayer. And together, let us profess the faith of the Church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe, we believe in, in one, one Lord, Lord, Jesus Christ, the, the only, only Son, Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People for today is Form 2, found on page 385 in your prayer book. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops Michael, Andy, Jesse, Kay, and Hector. For this gathering and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for the people of the city of Freeport, the county of Brazoria, and the state of Texas, the mayor, the city council, and all departments and staff of the city of Sweeney, all employees of Chevron and Phillips, our brothers and sisters in the Episcopal Diocese of Texas at St. Catherine of Siena, St. John's Palacios, St. Mark's Bay City, and St. Mark's Richmond. <clears throat> for the right to use, for the right use of God's gifts, Almighty God, whose loving hand has given us all that we possess, grant us peace that we may honor you with our substance, and remembering the account which we may one day give, may be faithful stewards of your bounty. For those on our parish prayer list, High and Salim, Beverly, Nola, Donna, Robert, Allie, Nate, and Al, and for all others whom God knows without being said. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so now, as we transition to the service of the table, let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. You may be seated as you are able. <laughs> Look around me I can see my life before me Running rings around the way it used to be I am older now I have more than what I wanted But I wish that I had started long before I did And there's so oh, much time to make up everywhere you turn Time we have wasted on the way So much water moving underneath the bridge Let the water come and carry us away Oh, when you were young Did you question all the answers did you envy all the dancers who had all of the nerve? Look around you now, you must go for what you wanted. Look at all my friends who did and got what they deserved. And there's so much love to make up everywhere you turn. Love we have wasted on the way. So much water moving underneath the bridge Let the water come and carry us away Let the water come and carry us away Pray 
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. service continues on page 367, Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. <coughs> we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of this week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Lord. God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people. In your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his, his death, death, we proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and of his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be sanctified, acceptable through him, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Mary and St. Paul and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now 
and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let let us keep keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries 
that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and stay with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Closing song. Well, we're going to do a little uh, tribute today to our veterans. Everybody should have their handouts. So sing loud and sing proud. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vineyards where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath close the grateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Of a hundred circling camps They are building him an altar In the evening dews and damp Can read his righteous sentence By the dimming flaring lamps His day is marching on Glory, glory, hallelujah Has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never sound retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. of the lilies Christ was born across the sea with the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me as he died to make me holy let us live to make men free while God is marching on everybody glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah Ha, 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 ha.